actually said is, say, I, I was just kind of, uh, you know, paraphrasing since I couldn't reach the handout with my power being out. But the exact words in that note were, People of Kalaman, I exert my rightful claim as ruler of the province of Nightland. Submit or flee. Lord Lauren Soth, Knight of the Rose. <clears throat> Which, you know what, um, you all can give me a history. That bear sure knows his history somehow. Guess so, eh? Um, mine's not rolling. Did I roll insight? You sure did. Uh, what is your modifier for history? Uh, three? Okay, so you originally rolled an eight plus a three, uh, makes it eleven. <clears throat> So, uh, Bjorn and Braun. The two of you know some things about Lord Soth. You're aware that he was a knight of Salomnia of the Order of the Rose. He ruled the province of Nightland where it was where when it was known as Nightland with a K. Oh yeah, you gave us this last week before we entered the room. Did I? Did I actually give you all this? Uh, yeah, well, we were talking to the group in the hallway. Okay, fair. So, <clears throat> with all of your knowledge, you guys head towards the stairs. A doorframe sculpted with somber night stands in an alcove along this corridor. The doorframe was once sealed, but shattered bricks now lay scattered across the floor. Beyond the opening, a steep flight of stairs descends below ground. Violet light and the sound of crackling flames emanate from below. And I believe when we actually ended, uh, you guys were about to head down, yes? Yeah, the staircase of mystery. Indeed. Oh, great. Now I gotta find the dam. Oh, where's the map? I just had it. You said we could see firelight? Uh, you can hear the crackling of flames, and you can see a violet light shining up from the stairs. Give me a moment. I'm trying to find where I put the damn map. Here it is. Yeah, Brian's yeah, gonna be like, something beckons us. <clears throat> Before we open the door or anything, I'm going to turn to the party and say, "Do how much caution should we be using entering in there? Should we be going in invisible or are we going in hot and strong? Mm, that's a good one. I don't know what to expect. I think we should make haste. You think it's something uh, so urgent? I think there's been a lot of shady business around this castle, and we should get to the bottom of it immediately. Bronze all like hyped up. I'm going to um, ready my my bow with a fire arrow. Um, everybody should still have three charges of luck, except Gondar, who I think used one or two. Yeah, you're right. I still have one left. And you guys have eight until 9 p.m. Everyone yeah, except me. Okay. As you all descend the stairs, 
Stairs descend into a stone chamber engulfed in violet flames. In the fire stand four dignified statues. Judging by the engravings in the armor in the statues, it's easy to tell that they are Knights of Salamnia. At the east end of the room, lies an antechamber before a double stone door. There, a fifth statue depicts a bison-headed warrior. How detailed are these statues? Do they look like they might not be just statues? They are very detailed, um, but with the amount of dust uh, upon them, uh, you can tell that they have not been touched for a long time. And as you look at these these flames, thinking that it should be burning the dust off them, uh, you notice that the flames do not seem to be darkening the stone, um, giving off any smoke or smell. It doesn't even seem to be burning the dust away, the, the cobwebs hanging off of these statues. These statues are, uh, are a little suspicious, guys. If I know anything, then it, I know that they might not They're be not. just statues, and we should be careful. <clears throat> uh, does this uh, look does like this... fairy fire or something like that? Have we seen this sort of magic? Or am I feeling any heat? That's the second question, maybe. It gives no heat off, either. Um, You know what? You, sir, can give me a... Arcana at advantage, given your your background. And if it was fairy fire, then we would know what that looks like because I've cast it in front of us. It does seem to be similar to fairy fire. The way the flames lick at the statue, causing no damage. Um, however, it does seem to be giving off uh, light, which fairy fire doesn't really do. <clears throat> um, um, you do notice that uh, you're pretty sure that this is some type of illusion magic. Mm. Yeah, Braun shares that with the group is um, saying that the the fire is not natural. I'm going to be casting guidance and can I be looking for traps? Sure. I'm doing detect magic. Sure. Uh, as you use your detect magic, um, you learn that Bron is right. The fire is an illus illusory uh, magic. <clears throat> Simply probably made to give off light. Are the statues magical? They are not. Um, which way is which on this map I'm looking at? North is north, south is south, etc. Cetera, et cetera. No, I mean, like, where did we come from? To, from the left or to the right? Okay, so we came down from the left? Yes. Ron goes to the bottom <laughs> of the stairs and kind of starts going through the room. Uh, I don't know these dudes, and our Knight of Salomnia friend is no longer with us. Correct. Correct. So I'm not going to... I mean, are, do the statues look like statues? They do. I, the, this one also looks like a statue. However, it is different from the rest. The others seem to be Knights of the Rose. However, as you and Braun get up here, um, I'll allow one of you to give me a religion. And did I notice any traps or anything on the way? You have not. Um, did I detect any magic when I entered the new room? No, you did not. Uh, and I... I don't have proficiency in religion, so I can't help you with this. Uh, but you know I'm not good at religion. And sometimes God's been angry at me. 
So I'll Some defer to you pass. for this religious check. Bron uh, agrees and says, "Sometimes the god for gods forsake me as well." But takes a look. Oh, no advantage. <clears throat> we look at the statue. Okay. Um, you know that this is the statue of Kiri Jolith, the god of honor and war. And as you're in his presence, both of you, the drag and brawn, feel a sense of disappointment. I'm disappointed. Can you flush out the disappointed feeling at all? It's not so much it's that not you feel disappointed. It's that something feels... It's almost like eyes staring at you disappointed. I don't like this thing. Does it remind me of anything I've ever experienced when I've prayed to Majir? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, I know it starts with a B. Who's our fallen comrade? Bedvir. Was Bedvir Kiri Jolith? Uh, no, he was not. Okay. However, Ron, as you move to the left side of the statue, and Drag, you are on the right. Uh, you do notice that the uh, there's more of these flames. However, as these false flames lick the walls, you both notice them becoming almost like depictions. It takes you both a moment to notice that uh, Bron, yours on the north wall, and a drag yours on the south wall. The thing of the flames. Look closely. Give me one moment to read this. I'm going to beckon to. Bjorn and Gondar. Um, this one's different. Ron. Is it safe for us all to move up there? How so? I believe he was asking you for drag. I think yeah. they were both asking yeah. you guys. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it was at the same time. What was the question? So yeah, how does different. it seem different? <laughs> what do okay. you mean? Uh, Bjorn asked, "Is it safe?" And Gondar asked, uh, "How are how is it different?" In response to "Is it safe?" I'll tap my foot on the ground to show that the ground is real. And uh, Gondar's question. Sorry. Yeah, how is it different? In what way? Um, uh, bad vibes. <clears throat> oh. I mean, not just the, the, not just like that. There were like four in the other room and only one in this one, 
but this one has like bad vibes. No, it's it's the walls. Uh, the walls here uh, seem to be coated in flames. Uh, it's giving you a depiction. But Padrag, yours shows an armored man handing someone smaller a bottle. Guys, do you think we should look closer? Uh, I mean, search the walls. Something like that. Is this... Uh, let me know when 10 minutes is up. Is this uh, also illusion magic? Yep. However, it does also... see This one seems to have a... A divine feel to it. Yours shows a man or someone in heavy armor handing someone a bottle much smaller than him. And then it shows the one in armor walking away. After he walks away, the smaller one seems to fall over and die. Braun, yours. Shows a short but stout hooded figure bringing a weapon down over and over on a dead body. And the feeling of something being disappointed in you gets heavier. Does anyone else see it? No. I just You're... stare and kind of brood at it. Bjorn's pretty fun. busy sketchily looking around at all the walls and stuff, wondering when the other shoe's gonna drop. In in my vision, the heavily armored man died or the one that who no, was handing no. the bottle the heavily armored man after handing a bottle standing there for a moment walked away and the smaller one who took the bottle crumples down and lays still oh the murder <laughs> yeah the murder The time I did the crimes. Yes, yes. Same with Braun. Same with Braun. Yeah. The war crimes. <laughs> However, um, after this rotates through once or twice, it fades away to nothing. Do you guys tell us what you saw? I would just say that the gods judge us here. This is a holy place. They don't understand our actions, but we must keep true. There's a lot. We must keep pushing. I mean, everybody was in the room when I did the thing with the caltrop and the thing with the bottle. So, like, uh, it's not like anybody was asleep and didn't know about. But I mean, I just meant, did we? Did you tell us what you just saw in the shadows? Because like we were. So you guys didn't see what I just saw. No. No, I told you, I'm, like, focusing on these other sketchy flaming statues because I don't trust that they're not going to come alive. Doesn't matter if you wouldn't have seen it anyways. Bron does not share what he saw. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to... I will have shared what I said to the guys in the other room with the four statues. That's us. Are we... What's the plan, guys? Are we... Are we moving forward, or... I'm, I'm a little, I'm getting a little uneasy in here. I think we should push onwards. Bjorn, as you enter room, the room, the flame is on this north wall. 
new. However, yours doesn't seem to be reflective of you or your actions. You don't <clears throat> you don't feel a sense of someone being disappointed in you. Instead, what you see what seems to be a knight of Salomnia fighting an ogre well, a group of elf travelers hide behind a wagon. An elf woman falls into the knight's arms. Behind him, the silhouette of a human woman turns and fades away. And only I see it like that? No, this one everybody sees. That's weird. You guys saw that too, right? How long Way have I had time. to check magic up for? Five minutes. Uh, and th this is all the illusion? It is. I'll say that out loud to the, the group of guys. I'll be like, uh, you know, this, like, gesturing around the room with one hand. This is. Uh, illusion magic. What what do you like the things you guys saw were things about our past. Do you guys know what this means? It's not familiar to me. I've never I've never seen those people. Distractions. We should push onward. What, what is we the world live in a world of magic and gods? There's much will never understand. What does the doors in front of us look like? Like, what kind of doors are they? Is there any runes or anything written on them? Alright. Um, <clears throat> the doors throughout the catacombs are made of stone. They can be opened, uh, yada, yada, yada. It's made of stone. Nothing, uh, no great murals on this one. Uh, just rather simple. Um, the ceilings, by the way, are 15 feet high. Um, so the doors, like, is there a clear, clear depicted way of how to open them? Or do they, are they just like solid stone doors that meet in the middle? Judging by the fact you do not see any hinges, um, on this side of the door, probably feel they're push doors. However, uh, you said you were checking for traps, so you may give me an investigation or an arcana. <clears throat> Can I help him uh, with arcana? If he's, uh, I that did path? investigation, but okay. I think I'm good because I was still using my guidance. Seems to be untrapped. Uh, it, it looks clear to me for traps. I'm... I'm Pretty confident. Push the door open with my shield. Or at least try to. Doors swing open. And as they do... This long chamber blazes with violet flame. Walls are lined with alcoves, within which bo lie bodies wrapped in yellowed cloth. A brazier rests at the end of the hall. Uh, a section of wall has been smashed to the southwest. So behind this one... Sorry, I'm on the wrong layer. Behind this coffin you can see that there seems to be a um, a small area that has been destroyed behind it um, and you can see it leads to another chamber any magic on the coffin uh, da, 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 da. one second Be 
Bjorn takes a nervous swig from his flask of whiskey. No. No, there's no uh, no magic. Oh. Um, how how far away is this? Down at the end of the hallway. It's like 12 seconds away. Uh, I mean, if you dash, less. Um, I'd like to get down to that before my text of magic wears off. Sure. Uh, Bron's just kind of looking around at the tunnel and says out loud that someone has clearly desecrated this this holy place. And when, he's, he's wondering what's back there and why they would be here. When I hear the word desecration, I'll say... Um, One investigation at a time. <laughs> uh, you've seen me open myself up to. I don't want to fucking say the Holy Spirit um, to divine sense and. Uh, try to figure out if something's consecrated or desecrated when we're at that creepy ass river. I can do that here near these two. Uh, It won't ping. Um, the two body shaped things. The two bodies? It might be yeah. worth checking out what's beyond that tunnel. Yeah, because I didn't detect magic, but I'm going to head down the. Ooh. Sure. And as you get to here, you move. Because I've got detect magic up with the 30 foot the whole way. As you get to here, this wall flames start to change yet again. Like intensity or color? Because they were violet, right? No, I mean just like they did in the previous room. Now, Pedrag. You see a man sitting in a chair while another man swings a rope. Starts hitting him with it underneath. It's James Bond. I believe that's what you did, isn't it, Padraig? What? The rope. In the seat. Hanging someone? No. No, you casino royaled him with the broken with the chair with the broken bottom. In. That is that's what you, that's isn't that what you did in uh, Vogler? The prisoner? No, no, you were going to. That's right. You were going to. But they, yeah. they to she told you not to uh not to torture in her bar. Yeah, unless otherwise stated, I don't do war crimes. However, that is what you see. And you think back to that moment where <clears throat> you made the decision not to do it. But the flame is flickering along this wall. You start to look at the armor, and it is your armor that this person in the vision seems to be wearing as he beats the man with the knotted rope from under the chair. But you continue on, if you wish. <clears throat> Are you? Uh, do, do I think these uh, the caskets or what are these? What are we calling these? They are. It, it's bodies wrapped, sitting upon. Um, the hell's the word for it? Stone slabs. They are wrapped in yellowish cloth. Like a morgue? Like a catacomb. What Bjorn said. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll just kind of say over my left shoulder, uh, two, two more up here. No magic detected? Nope. Uh, nothing magical. And then I'm going to keep going to get 
Oh, I'm already kind of within 30 feet of the thing. I want to see. Here. Wait, before we all move up, um, maybe we should peek what's at the end of this. If somebody broke this open, then it had to have been for something. I, I am able to go invisible and, you know, just peek in and, and see what's on the other side. I'll oh, come well, with yeah. you. Uh, I'll come with you in that case. I think it's not uh, wise to go alone. All right. We'll we'll, we'll we'll wait for um, Padraig to get to the end with his thing before I actually go in, though. Okay. Oh, you guys are talking about one of the uh, sides. Yeah. The well, no, the broken open catacomb. That, yeah. That, that's the start of this. You wanted to get to the end before your spell ran out. So I'll, I'll say just wait for him to get to the end and check for magic. And then I feel we need to come back and tactically, um, you know, cross off all by hall before we go too deep. Okay, my bad. When I said clink clink, I meant like that it already kind of ran ahead. Um, no, no, that's what I'm saying. You ran ahead to, to check for that stuff, so I'm just saying I'm going to wait for you to finish checking for magic and come back, and then we should mark off hall by hall checking things. The brazier is a brazier flickering with purple flames, just like the rest. Nothing seems to be special about it other than the illusory magic. However, <clears throat> Gondar. Yep. You see uh, flames start to build up on this wall, purple-violet flames. And as you turn to look, you see what looks to be the same night from the previous vision looks to be cast out from a group of other knights. The scene fades into a wedding between the knight and the elf woman who fell into his arms in the previous room's magic before it fades away into just simple soft flames yet again. Uh, all these uh, scenes, do they seem to be happy ones or not? I mean, uh, is there an expression of joy in them or sorrow? In the first one, both. In the second one, both. So we're just seeing the story of uh, these knights' uh, uh, relation with this self woman. Okay, guys, apart from history, anything else of importance here? Patrick, can you see anything? Or hear anything? Um, so I'm within 30 feet of these other six bodies. Anything magical? Anything? Give me a uh, poster detect magic for me, real quick, would you? Please. Again? Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. Nope. Nothing other than the uh, violet flames. The healing potions we bought, what kind of healing potions were they? I, I don't think he ever told us. I think they were regular. Yeah, just potion of healing. Okay, that's, okay, what, I that's what I put. Not like minor or serious.
Um, Padrag, to oh. your south, you do notice a door, however. Um, it is stone, and it is closed. Okay, but I did see the gap here that the guys stopped at? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. Um, has there been any... Like, have I, have I heard them talking to each other while I've been down here looking at the... I mean, it's probably a pretty echoey chamber. You're not exactly far away. I'd say probably, yeah. Yeah, like, sound seems pretty normal. Yeah. Also, before um, you ran off, you heard us talking about wanting to check it out, too, but we're waiting for you. Yeah, I'm just making sure, that, like, there's nothing weird going on, sound-wise. Like, I could see you guys, but not hear you or something like that. Um, So, I'll say that there's a there's a door down here also and that it's closed and um, I'm going to get to there to check it out whether it's investigation or perception or whatever and then head back to the guys what kind of traps you looking for oh no I, I didn't specifically say traps just like looking around okay yeah it's a stone door just to see if there's anything that makes it different than the one I pushed open with my shield earlier. Nope. So that I have information to give the guys. No, just a regular door, although it is a single door instead of a double door. His reaction makes me feel there's traps. Um, was it like the same height? 15 feet? Uh, the ceiling is 15 feet. Uh, the, the doors, I'm going to say, are probably about 8 feet. Okay. So I'll go back and tell the guys... What I found. Smaller door, single, closed. Um, no, nothing magical detected at any of the uh, bodies. The bodies are visible, right? Um, I mean, the you, you can see the cloth that's wrapped around, wrapped around them. Um, you can definitely see that there are bodies there. But you can't really see flesh. To get right, down, I mean, it's not. It's not like a picture of the body on top of it, and then no, like. No, no it, it it's a body. That uh, that opening in the wall that leads down to the other chamber. Um, how big is it? And like, what is like? Would I have to crawl over the body to get into it? Yes. And yes. Uh, it's it's big enough for you to fit through, if that's what you're asking. Um, but yes, you would definitely have to crawl over the body. Would you guys like me to uh, make myself invisible and just walk to the end of that tunnel, peek through, see what's in there, and then I'll come back and report? Um, none of these were empty, right? No, nope, they all have a body on them. Um, the door and this, do either of those seem to be more of a down? No. Like, they both seem like they're the same elevation change or yes. lack of change? Okay. Because I, I, that, that's what I was going to say is I think we're supposed to go down, but it looks like this opening and the door at the end of the hall are both on the same level. So I don't know which one gets us deeper into this, you guys. I just, I just feel it would be foolish to press on without at least taking a peek at what was so important for them to desecrate this, this tomb. Yeah, there's a reason why they're here, and this looks like a pretty damn good reason to me. So should I, should I go invisible and just go check it out and come back quickly? If you think that you have to go invisible, go for it. Uh, Otherwise, I only suggest I'll be prepared for a fight. I only suggest invisible because I'm going in alone, and I don't know what would be in there. I'm all for it if you can do it, yeah. Resource-wise. I can cast it twice for free per day, and use spell slots for it. Perfect. That's good. So, so before I turn myself invisible, though, I'm gonna ask these guys: Would you guys help me step over 
into the opening without having to touch and desecrate this uh, this person's final resting place any further. Um, I'd like to do divine sense. If that's okay. Sure. Uh, I'll move to where my character is currently at and do divine sense for a vibe check. Post it for me. You hear heavenly music in your ears. And you sense... Uh, what's the range on? 60 feet, huh? That's not behind yep. total cover? Okay. Um, you feel something coming from over here. Over here. And it gives you a strange sense. Because you can tell that it is undead. And yet, the music that rings softly in your ears is usually that of something good. So, these two bodies? And then nothing from here? Nope. Um, I'll let the guys know. I don't think um, that one's been desecrated or anything. Uh, but I'm getting undead vibes from... That one, and that one. Don't, don't. I guess don't. I'd have to be there to point at both of them. Just don't, uh, maybe don't do anything about it until I can run down there quick and run back. Yeah, I'll, uh, maybe go down by the brazier and, uh, repeat this process because there were a few bodies down there is anybody helping me like yeah I'll help myself you. over this grave without yeah. touching it yeah yeah i'll help you get over the the body to, to not touch or mess with the best we can yeah and i'll, as I'll soon as i'm watch over. as well I, i'm like the standing watch after Padre's comment just a little bit more on edge eyeballing everything up and uh, helping uh bjorn as soon as I'm over, I, I use my bandor to make myself invisible. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing happens as you pass over into that area. But Drake, you can no longer feel the one that was over here in this southern alcove, um, but you can feel the one here. And the five I see here in the brazier... Or all chill. Very chill. Okay. Um, uh, I'll head back then. As I get to the edge, um, I'm going to be watching out for traps or things at a place that uh, anything suspicious. As you get to here, you look down to the west. Here. You see mosaics of knights riding armored stallions covering the walls of this room and are lined in violet flames. To the east lies a shattered stone door. So can I tell how long um, the hallway to the east? Oh, never mind. That's the. I end, mean, you right? you can see the end of it. <laughs> like... Sorry, my scrolling left and right isn't working right on my roll twenty, so it takes me a minute. It, it took out like the bar at the bottom that I used to scroll left and right. Okay, so what you're gonna do is just right click and drag to the side on the map. Uh... So that tomb at the end. Sorry, you said it. It was a an animal. It looks like an animal. I I I mean, 
Give me a sec. Alright, so to the east lies the shattered door. Uh, yeah, the, sorry, the walls are lined with mosaics of knights riding armored stallions. However, at the west end stands a statue of a rearing horse. What looks to be a couple alcoves, though you cannot see what is in them. Alright, I'm going to go back up to the top. Right here, I'm still invisible. And I'm going to whisper over to them. Guys, there's some a really interesting chamber down here. It's, it's different than that one. There's mosaics on the walls. And there's a different kind of tomb at the end and there's two long hallways i uh I, I feel it's worth checking out but i don't want to venture too far by myself yeah you're right in that uh should we all go in together yeah i think let's check this out yeah do we know is there any uh sign of the ethereal person lidara did they just disappear, or did they run down this way? She just vanished, I'm pretty sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember there being a direction attached to the vanishing. Well, yeah, we were talking to her, asking her questions, and she just, like... Okay. Disappeared like still a power in this house. I'm still invisible, so, like, once you guys get to the edge, just before you enter the room, um, maybe just hold up and have my back, and I'll press forward silently invisible, but that way you're close to me. Yeah, as soon as I come out of the end, I say, Psst, Bjorn, are you here? Yes. I'm following Ron. As I'm walking, I'm still watching for traps, and I'm looking at the the mosaic, mostly for maybe openings in the wall where where spells or arrows could shoot out. Fucking hell! I've been sitting here talking this entire time, thinking nobody's fucking listening. My mic is oh, muted. No. Uh -huh. Gondar, would you like to catch up before I go on with what's about to happen? <laughs> Alright, as you get to this point, you all see this, the uh, <clears throat> mosaics in the wall change. Uh, let's see. One sec, which one is it? You guys skipped a room, so I just gotta check. Okay, the next one. So, you guys see the knight seems to be receiving a vision from a beam of divine light. This spot of divine light on this, um, from this violet fire, the fire suddenly turns white, almost like it's shining down on him. And as he looks up into it, From behind him, his seems that his wife feeds with him. But as she does so, he dons his armor, mounts his steed, then heads off. And as this fades back to the regular... The regular uh, violet flames. You hear a <laughs> from behind you. Or in front of you, I guess. And suddenly. Can you ping the map where the sound came from? Probably where the horse is just materialized on the map in front of you. On the left. Oh, my zoom was weird. Sorry. Um. <laughs> uh. But as they do, um, you realize that war horses that suddenly stand before you, armored, are skeleton war horses. 
what would you guys like to do as they begin to charge? Do they actually take up all of that room? That 10 foot square? Um, are they um, ethereal or they're skeletal. skeletal? Okay. So I'm going to press myself up against the wall because I'm still invisible. So I'm going to move up against the wall. Guys, should we make it for the other room with the debris or the tunnel we came from? I wouldn't want to be caught in their charts. Sounds good to me. Yep. I would just be, uh, Braum would be reacting as well with everyone. Sure, you guys are running away. I mean, we're just going into this next room, I think. Mm -hmm. To me, into the tunnel. Sure. Um, would I have time to even because they're ch charging right away would i have time to even catch up to them um not if you're trying to stay silent you said you went against the wall yeah so i'm just gonna stay pressed up against the wall and silent they charge in one turns to gondar and it looks at you gondar meanwhile the other one gets to this doorway and stops and it looks um, at you both. Uh, both of these ones are looking at the three of you. Um, is it within my reach? If it is, I have a reaction attack. I Do mean, they look like they're attacking, though? Or have they just stopped and they're looking? As they charge in and stop, and they do kind of rear up, however, they do not pursue further into the room or into the um, uh, destroyed uh, area where Gondar is. While they're doing, looking at them, could I be moving silently towards the sh shrine at the um, you may, however, I want you to give me a perception. As they flew by you, you notice something about the the barding they're wearing. Plate barding. It has this same kind of symbols and engravings as the Knights of Salomnia. And as you look towards the statue over here, a horse reared up with a knight on its back. You realize that statue barding looks to be the same as the barding that they are wearing. Would I be able to um, infer maybe if I destroyed the statue, they would disappear? Because they're like ghostly en entities. Like a skeleton would be like a like an animated... Like is a skeleton kind of a ghost? Animated bones? It could be. I mean, you can give me a um, arcana. <laughs> Uh, but Holy sorry, fucking guy, 20s today. Gondar, I'm sorry, he's, uh, I mean, you went, looks like, 10 feet in, so he is not within reach. Um, but as, uh, I mean, generally, yes. Um, but given the, what Patrag told you about the undead that he could heal, and yet no one dead came out. Kind of maybe seems like... Give me, give me an insight. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say Padraig or 
um, Braun on this one can give me an insight. And yes, and normally yeah, skeleton, skeletons are normally uh, like animated um, magically, sometimes divinely. We're fucking crushing these rolls today, boys. Yeah, just wait till combat. <laughs> I got some ones in me. Um, Padrag, you realize that as this thing charged toward you, it can easily get through this door and begin to attack you. However, it seems like it stopped at the doorway, started rearing up, much like a horse does either when it is scared or it is trying to scare something else. Uh, I'm gonna say to Braun, I don't think they want us at the other end of that hallway. Or was it was it a hallway or more of a room? The, it's a, this... it's a hallway. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna tell Braun. I don't. I don't. I think they're trying to keep us away from the other end of that room. This While all this is happening, sorry. Go ahead. To say this room, this place is full of tricks. It wouldn't surprise me if this is just ways to slow us down. I didn't know all this was down here um do you know where juniper is juniper went with um Kajol to to rally up before they came back here while all of this is happening i want to be still slowly creeping towards that statue there so do you want to move me yeah, you can move. as they're talking well, I was going to say, you move me how far you think I would be getting as all of their talking and stuff is going on. Give me a stealth. Oof. Do I get advantage for being invisible, though? Yeah, I think you do, actually. Nat 20. So, as Gondar, Drag, and Ron are kind of cornered off, Bjorn is separated from the rest of the group. He's moving towards the statue. Three of you, what would you like to do? I mean, the horse is still just chilling there? It's still trying to seem, probably try to scare you. It's rearing up, but it doesn't seem to pass this doorway, nor does it pass uh, this edge uh, where the where the destroyed new tunnel is. Into the would room. it fit to pass into this tunnel? Yes, it would. Okay, I'm gonna move it there. So they're meant to keep us uh, out of this room. Uh, can I try to calm the horse? Give me an animal handling. If you're talking, we can't hear you. No, I'm reading. Um, how do you try to calm this horse? What it, what it, what or this skeleton horse? What do you do? Yeah, I put my hand out, kind of a little bit high, as if to like not immediately pet it, obviously, but to like put my hand out and say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" <laughs> you know, like easy calming it, trying to speak a little bit easy to it. Um, but with my arm out. Give me advantage then. One more roll. Seventeen. Oh. As you start to calm it, the other one seems to turn away from Gondar. 
comes over here next to the other one they seem to both calm and they look at each other they both in unison bow and vanish whoa okay before oh, i touched it no no not not before you touched it What was that thing you did? Mm. The spirits here are restless. Maybe it's a warning. The brawn? I think. Yeah. In your head, you suddenly receive two names. Zaryev and Steelwind. And you feel like you now have the ability to summon them. Hmm. There seems to be the I think these horses are are here to help us. Zaryev and Steelwind. Hmm. And I mentioned that there seems to be something strange about the whole scenario. Can I just like summon them up? Or do, is it just like a... Before you do, you hear a voice in your head. In life, these were my noble steeds. They each served me strength and honor and loyalty they will now serve you for 24 hours each where they will then return to rest 24 hours after being summoned or just starting now Bron, you feel like it's probably like once summoned. Um, okay. How this works? Give me one moment. Where the hell to go? Do 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 do. Here it is. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, Bron will mention that um, the dead have given us a gift. Uh, they know that we're here to help. When needed, we can call upon these steeds. We will kind of then we'll kind of we'll hold it for now. But when we need it, we'll know. Something's going on here, though. I wonder what's happening with with other things accessing here. We should maybe push on to see why this is happening and why the dead feel the need to give us gifts. So I was going to give Padraig a rundown of what he sees in this room. However, he is AFK at the moment. Still here. All the groups leave the area. There's here one. Okay, uh, I think he's uh, not feeling well, but he will be right back. Um, you know what, how we're going to do this is, uh, Ron, as, as you get this uh, new ability to summon, uh, you realize Padraig has kind of just stopped moving in the other room. Bjorn, uh, I'm going to say you probably got all the way there before uh, the... Force has actually vanished. How long does it last, by the way? Invisible? 10 minutes? It's one hour. Oh, damn, okay. 
Um, so as I was like passing those out branchings, I'm not like walking over to them, but I'm definitely quickly studying what those doors look like. And then as I get closer, closely studying and watching for traps or anything of interest for this big statue. Um, just some regular eight foot doors to the south. Um, two separate ones, single doors. Um, as for the statue, nothing seems to be magical about it. Um, other than the high detail in it, it seems like a normal statue with, uh, some illusory flames running over it. Giving off light. Um, side note, I just realized I don't have permission to send things in our Discord group. I was going to send a link for a character sheet I've been making, like a list of people we've met with, like where we've met them, class, like what we know about them. In Shadow of the Dragon Queen? Yeah. It won't let me uh, type in the notes. What, like in the Dragonlands campaign, the thing in Discord, there? yeah, in Discord, it, in our campaign notes area. Oh, that's because there's too many people with the same rank. Uh, that's why I posted the uh, the campaign notes Google Doc link, so you guys can edit it that way. Oh, true. I was gonna post a Google Doc link for my uh, spreadsheet of characters if people wanted to add to it or see it. Sure, send it to me in Discord in a message and I'll put it in there. It's just there. there's too many um, too many D&D players in this Discord that would have access to it if I gave you access to it. That's the only reason, because I don't want it. It's for a specific group, right? So I don't want, like, you know, the other six six uh, groups of players that play, you know, starting to, to post in in those particular ones and stuff. Make sure the link works before you forward it. And guys, feel free if I've missed anything or like miswritten any information to uh, to to change correct it. Uh, that is not how that works, my guy. Uh, you have yeah. to. No, no, the 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 document. What do you mean? It didn't uh. work. No, you're going to have to put it into, like, a Google document, because that asked me for a fucking, uh, a Microsoft login. Oh, okay, I'll do it later. Yeah. That's fine. Guys, I think it's safe up here. If you, uh, if you want to come check this out. That, I, I, I caught a glimpse of what happened with the horse, and that was crazy. How much time has elapsed since he's been exploring that? Um, we we took care of some other things. Uh, basically, <clears throat> uh, were you here long enough for Bron to get the the uh, the horse thing? Uh, that that's when I had to run. Oh, I didn't actually post it. Fuck. Oh yeah, I did. I gave it to. Uh... Uh, I heard something about uh, two names. And then that's when I... Basically, he gets Basically. Uh, what's called a charm, a uh, favor of the heroic steed. Uh, he's got two steeds that can serve him. Um, basically, the charm has two charges. As an action, you can expend one to summon a war horse wearing plate barding, AC 18, uh, serves you for 24 hours, then vanishes. Uh, and once it's gone, it's gone. So... Um, but then he just kind of got to the other side of the room and checked that. But, but Drag, since you're in this room, good sir. Um, violet flames engulf this room, dancing across walls with faded mosaics of blacksmiths forging gleaming weapons. Bars seal off alcoves to the north and south. Right here. And here. Um, the room you ran through here, uh, looks like a quest. Um, weapons hang upon the walls. 
although most of them look more ornamental than they do useful. Um, uh, so like three things. So I'm not sure what order to do this in. Well, give me um, one sec because there's something else you notice first. This wall here. The flames change. You notice the knight encountered the attendants of the elf woman from the vision. They taunt him and point back the way he came as he walked towards them. The knight slays them and turns back home in a rage. He killed elves? Yes. <clears throat> yes, he did. In fact, the ones that he killed looked an awful lot like the ones that were present at their wedding. He killed them and then went back the way he came. Uh, I'm going to look at Gondar and be like, did you see that? Yeah. Strange. Yeah, I can I do a history check to see if I know what this is. Sure. Because like some of the stuff I've seen, I've recognized as being, oh, that's from when I killed that guy. But other of this stuff, like, sounds like it's maybe from, like, a storybook or a play or, a, or, I don't know, history, whatever. Yeah, give me a history. Whoa. Throat the history books. You are well aware um, during your time schooling with your, your family that history books are usually written by the victor. However, with Lord Soth gone for so long, much of his histories seem to be myths. Nobody is sure what is 100% true and what is not. However, from what you have read, be it you know, the, the fairy tales growing up, or from actual history books, this seems these visions you're seeing seem to possibly tell the history of Lord Soth. And given the fact that you've seen what you have done and what you had contemplated doing, not sure exactly how much of it is true, but you're almost certain that the visions that are you are seeing that are not about you are about Lord Soth. Whether it's histories, futures, or myths. Uh, I'm going to relay that to Gondar and tie it in with um, anything I can connect from the book that we're trying to translate. Hmm. Does it help them with that some? That's a nice That's a suggestion. Nice. Uh, can, uh, can there be a connection with what we have uh, deciphered so far from the book? I believe I said that book was on Death Knights in general, right? Yeah, correct. And how to create them, everything about it. 
but I also said it was 350 pages. Yeah, we don't know enough about it yet to know if it's like a dummy's guide to making a Death Knight or the history of Death Knights mm -hmm. or what. Right, right. right. Yeah, but perhaps there are some mentions of um, uh, changes in behavior. What could be signs that one is about to to change into a Death Knight or something like that? One page, so one page mm -hmm. that you remember uh, where you got most of the information. It seems to be very similar to some of these. At this point, you start to realize that maybe at least one small section of this book might have to do with Lord Soth. And who was it who talked to uh, the Wraith in the in the tavern in Vogler? Or shit, not the Wraith. Uh, Lydra. The, the hooded figure in the tavern in Vogler. I did. Gondar, you start to wonder. Because you remember her saying that she saw the fall of her friend who became Lord Soth. If she is one of the depictions in these flames. But Drake, you are very right in what you said. There is a connection here. And possibly we have already met some of the people who took part in this story of this uh, night, former night. That was very astute, my friend. Uh, thank you. Um, have I ever seen Gondar identify anything, or just the, just Bjorn? No, never. <laughs> not, not legally, anyways. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um. However, as the two of you are sitting here watching this and contemplating and speaking, I want both of you to make me perceptions at disadvantage. So is, is it for sight? It is. So it's a straight roll for me? Ah, disadvantage, you mean uh, because of darkness? No. Because you guys are enthralled in uh, trying to figure this mystery out. Okay. Okay. Something glinting in this rack, although most of them seem ornamental. You guys, do you notice a couple strange items? One sword seems to be the edge is catching the light and kind of starting to send small cascades of violet further along the walls. That's why it took you a moment to realize it. It's just sending more purple around the room. And as you turn to look, Gondar, noticing the sword, you also notice a very shiny breastplate. Okay. As well. As uh, as well as a what almost looks like a tattered shroud. However, along the collar and shoulders of it seems to be covered in dust. Still soft leaves of green, orange, yellow, and red. Uh, I turn to Bron. 
Bone, do you still uh, are you still able to detect magic? That's Padraig. Patrick, pa sorry. Uh yes. Um so I'm going to let's see. I'll move to here. Could you take a look at these two? So he's pointing out uh, a shroud, a sword, and a piece of armor. Yes, breastplate. breastplate. And it's with the. It's kind of like mixed in with the ornamental weapon racks or whatever. It is. However, with your perception, a drag. You realize that a good portion of this roof is starting to crack as a couple pieces of stone, somewhat like pebble size, ting off the top of your armor, your your headpiece. And you realize you are not going to have much time. You will be able to grab two of these objects. One, one um, run from each of you as you need to make your way out of this room quickly. Um, earlier when I was like walking around here, do I think that door is connected to the door that led south from a different room? Yes. Okay. But uh, based on the plaster falling off the ceiling or whatever, I'm probably going to want to exit this way. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, that's up to you. It, it's basically like this room, like right above you guys. So are we each grabbing one item, or it's up to you guys? I mean, you said are you? We can't grab all of them. I mean, you can try, but uh, I mean, shit's gonna happen either way. And if you're completely, your hands are completely full of shit, then. You know, whatever happens, you're probably gonna have disadvantage on it. So it's up to you. You you can totally grab all three if you'd like. I'm gonna uh, you, you notice the stuff okay. falling and tell Gondar um, uh, get back to the guys. Like the roof is gonna collapse, and I want to um, use my Whatever, whatever action and object interaction to grab all three items. And bonus action, misty step. Once you I... only have two hands, though. You are, you personally are not going to be able to grab all three on your own. Well, I grab one of them. Sure. I'm taking the shroud. All right, you grab the shroud. The drag, you grab the other two. You misty step out. Gondar, deck saving throw, please. Um, I will think I use my inspiration. Still have one left? Been saving that sucker a while, huh? You have luck. He has to. Yeah. He has got to use luck before you roll. Yeah, yeah. I had to say it beforehand. Players def definitely gotten chintzier with the inspiration points. Hey, there. There's a homebrew rule because I told you guys I forget sometimes. Yo, that is just enough, sir. You, you leap out of this room, um, into a forward roll while holding this um, shroud. Just as the roof collapses sealing off that room now while all that was going on did i find anything over here with the statue no it is a it it's a normal statue all right well then i'm gonna say i was walking back to them after i'd finished looking sure so as the dust settles um you know you guys start to cough a little bit um, but you all made it out fine. Are you guys okay? Holy, I just saw a poop of 
dust. I didn't know what happened. Is everyone good? It's a close call. Yeah. yeah. The the door I told you guys about earlier that was to the south, um, into that hallway, I think connects to it. There was uh, some more bodies and some armor, and we grabbed some things, but the ceiling was collapsing. I'm glad you made it. There's also two doors down there by the uh, by the horse statue. What happened with those horses? I just saw them vanish. Like, how how did you guys pull that off? I'm gonna look at Bron. Bron just looks at the group and says, "It seems we were given a gift from the dead." We, they know we are here to help. They honor us with them. They will be in our service if needed. Well, if everyone's okay, what do you think? Do you think we should check out that door down there or backtrack and the, check out the doors up top? I think that this uh, set of catacombs is uh, not in the best shape. And that some of these paths are leading to multiple paths. I think I should probably start making a map if we're going to go slow. Um, when I looked at the door earlier as I walked by, did I notice like any writing on it? Or is it the same thing? Looks like it's just a stone door that you push through. Same thing. Good idea. So should we finish checking out the doors down here or go go back up? I think push forward. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, I saw a, a room with a strange haze coming from it. Uh, where, where the collapse was before. Which way Southward. do you consider forward? I think through the way here. Uh, onwards where the direction of the steeds came from. And you said you saw a case that you weren't able to grab? Do you think there was a, another way it would be accessible? What? I was asking Gondar because he said before he got out of there he saw like a, a case or something. No, not so a case, asking, a haze. I saw oh, a something haze. of a, of a uh, it was like a purple haze. Oh, uh, more of the illusions telling us stories, maybe? Um, so like, from here, how much of this does look like it collapsed? Uh, can we clear this debris? Some... Um, that, that room is... It, a, a good portion of the room collapsed. It's, it's not going to be moved. Okay, but I believe that the can you you can ping black space. Okay, so I know that that doorway connects to that. Yes, yes. From when we were up there. Okay, so I'm heading down here. There's two doors. Do we enter both or choose? Um, and what what's going on with the? Is that horse thing still there? It's just a statue, and there's... I've done some investigation. It doesn't look like there's anything cool about it. I feel like that was just the anchor for those ghost horses. Um, I am not an architect, but I would not be surprised if these doors led into the same room. I'm still invisible, by the way. It's possible. Can someone check for traps? And I'm going to move to there. <laughs> I'm going to uh, check for traps on the door and pretty much open the door. And I'll check the other one. And Blair, you got to tell me when my hour is up. Yep, I will. Um... Fun trap you guys check for arcane or um regular uh, arcane for me and arcanum 
Uh, I can't check for both. You can. It's just two different rolls. All right. Well, I'll, I'll check for natural first, and then investigation, arcana. and then arcana. Bron, yours seems to be untrapped. Yeah, I'll help him with the arcana one, with the magical ones. You already rolled, unfortunately, my guy. Two. Those are two different rolls. Okay. Oh, unless you mean Bron. Bron hasn't rolled his uh, regular one. Yeah. Bjorn, your your door seems untrapped. Bron, you checking for regular ones? Yeah, if there's like, yeah, I'd be looking for trip wires, anything that would indicate anything else, like a any other physical traps for sure. Sure. Gondar is helping you. Advantage. Um, would my would my quarter staff be long enough for me to stand around the corner and push the door open with my quarter staff? No. It seems untrapped. All right, I go through the door. I'm gonna push myself up against um, one of the walls when I push the door open. Sure. Push the door open. It opens. Nothing happens. Oh, this is clear. What a relief. Did you guys enter this room? This chamber blazes with violet flames in the middle of the room. Steps lead up to a sleek marble monument etched with hundreds of lines of text. And as you all enter, the flames flickering along the walls begin to tell another story. Should we be able to see the thing at the top of the stairs in the middle? Because we can't. It, it's literally just a, a big stone thing. Like, it's, it's blocking your vision of the other side. Really is what it is. It's just a monument. As the flames begin to take shape, the knight slays his wife as the world around him crumbles and burns. You see flames rising over the body of this knight. He screams. His eyes blaze with flames. His face morphs behind his helmet. And the little bit of flesh you can see becomes withered. And leaks a dark blood red color. He becomes a terrifying, deathless figure. And the flames subside. Uh, is there any mention of why he's killing his wife? It did not mention it specifically, but you may give me an insight. Uh, dude, with the face morphing behind his helmet, that was the same figure from the other one, so I'm assuming it's Soth. It, it was the it same was. figure, yes. Gondar, you're not really sure why he killed his wife. I'm going to say to the group, um, y'all are seeing all this soft stuff, right? Indeed. This isn't just like a me and Majir thing. I see it. It is just all very interesting. Uh, 
uh, do you guys want to discuss what we're seeing? Compare notes or keep pressing on? The lady said there was secrets beneath Calamon. That's where we are, but I'm not feeling as great about it since that ceiling collapsed. I feel we need to press on. It's it's important for us to find out what they wanted us to see down here if we are to retake Palaman. I yeah, think that your, what your goal was for us to find out what uh, really went wrong with this uh, soft guy. Yeah, maybe the maybe we'll learn more. Let's pay close attention to any messaging we see in case it uh, gives us any more insight. Something and as soon as, as we have that chance, it. we'll have to go on uh, deciphering this book. Mm -hmm. I've only found one door in this room. I don't want to put away my um, sword and board, but I do want to kind of pay attention to like where we're going like I asked earlier like do I think those two doors are connected spatially what? They, they were connected we both each went through a door yeah, and they're, ended up they're in the open same row if, if I approach the statue no, in the center, center earlier the, the door to the north before the collapse and the door to the south oh oh I, no, no, the, those like, those were not doors. Those were jail cells. They were barred jail cells. If I get this close room, to right? This patch... These doors. Oh yeah, I, I I said yeah. Those definitely look like they were connected. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Like I want to uh, be keeping track of that stuff spatially, the best I can in character. Sure. Just in case we find something, we have to like bring Juniper or um, who's the other one that's still alive? Cudgel. Juniper or Cudgel down here. I I don't want us to fucking get lost because you know time's important. And we didn't actually see Marshall Vendry dead, did we? Just the council. Marshal Vendry was was with the rest of the 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 battalion. Remember? Yeah, we saw the caliph or caliph dead. Wait, Marshal Vendry was with the battalion. Then who were we calling back to to the city to talk to? And we talked to the goblin, the gnome, the gnome that eats sticks of butter. True. So, if I approach that statue in the center, do I notice anything? interesting about it you notice lines of texts upon it would you like to read them oh you can't read can you uh no but hey, i'll, I'll notify them now? there's these letter things you find another recipe i don't know could you help me out i you know i'm not great with the uh the words yeah words yeah, I'll, I'll look, see if it's another recipe on how to cook bears. So, what you notice first is uh, upon the marble slab, um, on each side, it says, Fallen Knights of Salomnia died at Castle Calamon. You see names, hundreds of names. You see, um, in fact, two of them actually stand out. One is Knight Vogler. And another one is Knight Janton. Can you spell the last one? In chat. Um... Now, as we walk around it, is there text on every side of it? And is there too much text to, like, sit here and read it all? I mean, they're all knights of, or they're all fallen knights. It's uh, hundreds and hundreds of names. Does anyone um, have... 
Go ahead. I was going to say, does anyone have a, a piece of paper and maybe charcoal or a writing utensil? And my voice is just like coming from nowhere because I'm still in the Do you need to write something down? I was thinking there's too many names here for us to read and maybe one of these could come in handy later. I, I feel like I don't know how to re read, but I've seen making brushings. I was going to put the piece of paper against it and make like a charcoal brushings of the just the names. So a drag as you listen to him and you look at this, you realize you would need about 100 pieces of paper. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the bear like he or where I think the bear is, where the sound of the bear is coming from. Like that area of the room is crazy, and I'm gonna look at the list of names. And based on my understanding of history, are they in a chronological or an alphabetical order, or is it just like random? It is random. Okay. Um. Uh, that defeats that follow-up question and then I'm gonna wander around the room. Is I'm there gonna years stay around? into the part of the room. Um it's it's not a recipe, it's a list of dead people. Um they don't have years because they all died in the defense of Calamon. Um actually you know what? Each each different side does have years on it. Um I don't know the years because I don't know when the battles took place. However, um, three of them, sorry, two, yeah, two of the walls um, have one year posted at the top of it, uh, which was the last time uh, a war came to Calamon, a, a real war. And then the other two sides, they do have years next to their names um which i don't know how many that is lots and lots of years i mean there's there's hundreds here right so i mean one final question that i'm gonna ask to braun who's inspecting um if we can't copy them all just from quick glancing do any of the uh, any of the surnames um look familiar to you as maybe an ancestor of people we know in Calaman? Because if you can recognize even one name and have a family member still alive in Calaman, maybe they could shed some light on their ancestry. I mentioned that I saw a Knight Vogler and a Knight Jarden. Oh, my bad. I didn't, I didn't realize it was Pat Drake helping me look at it. Sorry, Pat Drake. I mean, I, Vogler, like, player knowledge versus character knowledge. Uh, player and character both know Vogler. Mm, do either know Knight Jandon? No, not really. It just seems um, etched a little deeper. And would that be the only name on the thing that you would recognize like last name in total it's not even really the the name it's it's how it was etched into the stone is different than the others i know but that's not what i'm asking i'm just asking walking around it that's why i said to tim because i can't read just walking around it would, does he recognize any surnames he does not you know okay Shall we continue, boys? Guys, yeah, are we moving? So. Yeah, let's move forward. And Bronze is going to go and open the door. It opens. And explodes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you enter this room? 
you notice that uh, the flames along the walls. This time it doesn't really tell a story. Instead. Uh, instead, where to go? Skeletal visages leer at you from the flames and then vanish before popping up somewhere else. And continue this. However, as you walk in, um, noticing this at first, they, they don't seem to uh, do anything other than leer. However, in this room, statue of a saluting knight of Slomnia, along with two tall marble slabs etched with text. Stand here. Um, <clears throat> Bron uh, hold oh. on. All three crackle with violet flames and the spirit of a knight of Salamnia, which you can tell due to his armor, kneels before one of the slabs. Right here. <clears throat> a door leads to the east. Uh, sorry, a double door leads to the east. So the statue that you were talking about, looking at it, it's just not there, right? So... Right? No, you said there was a statue kneeled down looking at... A the... spirit. Yes. Oh, a spirit. Okay. Um, you know what? I gotta run to the bathroom. We're gonna take our break real quick. Alright. Okay. Okay. Hey, bro. Yeah, my clerk's gonna be um, not multi-classing into anything. Alright, so... I'm gonna read this one more time. You guys got this. We're, we're gonna play it like you guys just entered the room, alright? So you guys, you guys saw the vision of the fire on the walls. Skeletons, leer, skeletons leering at you. Now, a statue of a saluting knight of Salamnia stands in this room, along with two marble slabs etched with text. All three crackle with violet flames, and the spirit of a knight of Salamnia kneels before one of the slabs. Did you guys enter? She doesn't take notice of you. you can see, although you can't see her face due to her helmet. The long flowing hair that comes out from underneath the helmet. Seems either elvish or feminine. What do you guys want to do? This is What's your guys' area. Says. Uh, how many female knights of Swami am I familiar with? Becklin and Bendry. I believe Bendry's female. Uh, and then Elvish? Um. Neither. I don't think you've actually met any Elvish ones before. So I I would probably assume that it's a, a female knight more than a an elven knight. Good chance of that, yes. Yes. Does the hair color look familiar? Or the way the hair is? No. To anybody no. I've seen? No, it does not. It's just, um, it's blonde. At least you believe it is. She's kind of ethereal. Um, and just kind of hanging out of her helmet. Uh... Divine Sense. I think this is the last time today. Or maybe one more. So 
undead. Um, however, good rings or you hear almost a heavenly music playing in your ear. I will step forward and say, um, the blessings of Majir be upon you. Good night. Wait, which one? Wait, the statue is the thing in the middle, right? Statue's in the middle. The spirit is the here. The spirit is here. Oh, okay. Uh, so is the spirit like in this square that I'm in now? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Okay, then yeah, I'll, I'll go to this square and uh, face her and say what I said. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, one sec. Hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, what was that last line you said? Uh, Majir? Uh, the blessings of Majir upon you. Good night. With a K. Who is the other... Damn it, there's three Knights of... Uh, gods of Knights of Slavia, yeah? Paladine, Kiri Joleth, Majir. Paladine's the main one. Right. And Paladine with you. She stands. Um, you see that her... She did have her sword kind of like in front of her. Um, with the point towards the ground as she stands. She sheaths it. Are you a knight of Slavnia? You do not wear our armor. Uh, in this time of war, we fight for the same thing. One of our comrades is a knight of Salomnia, and he was uh, taken from us by a dragon. fight in his honor and for Kalaman dragon the knight of Salomnia it is strange she almost seems um although is she it seems like she's trying to give you her attention she also seems to like kind of fade in and out like maybe she's you know not quite all there um, she says, well, that is unfortunate. You are aware this is a catacomb. You should probably not be here. Unless you recovered your friend's body and have bring, brung him to rest. <clears throat> uh, we have not yet... found him hopefully when we do he doesn't end up down here we are here on another task related to the war at hand we we seek knowledge of the past war of Alamon that it may enhance our understanding towards the siege that is currently befalling Calaman, so we may honor your sacrifice and protect the city that you your people died protecting what is your name as, as Bjorn um, kind of mentions her protecting Calaman, you see a kind of a solemn expression come over her face and she kind of looks down towards the floor before you ask her name and she looks back up at you I am Knight Jarden I brought Salamir's body to Kalaman however I feel 
me being here in this form is punishment for what I've done. You said she had a sword in her hands? She sheathed it when she stood up. When she stood up. Okay. Um, did the sword look like real or like is it kind of ephemeral like the way her body looks? Same as her body. It's like it's you, you like... can definitely see it's there, but it's also like kind of ethereal in point. So it's not not like a illusionary mage hand holding a real sword kind of thing where they're very different. No, think um, Ghost Army in Lord of the Rings. Okay. Uh, just not um, looking all rotten and shit like that. I'll say um, I, I saw your name etched in the other room. I'm sorry, Kalaman lost you? What would ease your punishment? Maybe if I tell you my story, the truth, maybe that will set me free. Uh, what does this room look like? What are, what are the slabs? Marble. I mean, like, how high are they? How big are they? Um, you say they're about uh, eight feet high. Hmm. Um, see, does it say what's on them? What's that? Uh, uh, it is more names of those who've fallen. Knights of Salon. Is, is there like a chair? There, there is no chair. Okay, I am going to um, stand, uh, put, put my shield behind my back, still on my arm, and say I'm listening. I'm going to you by, like, her tone of the story and, and play low um, background music that changes on the tone of the story. Very well. Give me a performance. Not bad. I'm anyway. using the band door so it's a low bassy uh strum. Okay. She points to a name upon the slab. And as you read it it says uh Salamir. Sorry, Sarlamir. Order of the Crown. I brought him back here to be buried among his people. I told the story of his heroic death. said he had died defending people from rampaging evil dragons and they named him a hero I feel this is what what has kept me here for I know the truth Sarlamir's disobedience and deeds contributed to the gods disfavor ultimately cataclysm I didn't stop him. I should have stopped him. Would you stop him? What? Could you have stopped him? I don't know, but I, I should have tried. But he, he was my commanding officer. I was torn between loyalty to the people to my order. He was always respected. 
but when he received the divine quest from Paladine years before the Cataclysm, he was told the King Priest of Istar had created a magical wonder in the east, a flying city. And in doing so, the King Priest had enraged the metallic dragons that had long remained hidden on Kryn. He was tasked with going to this flying city, massaging the dragon's fury, and convincing the King Priest to return to the city, to the land. Sorry, return the city to the land. Sarlamir agreed. However, he decided to hedge his bets. He took his family's greatest treasure with him, an ancient dragon lance. When we reached the King Priest's flying city and stood before a flight of righteously furious metallic dragons, the King Priest refused to land the flying city, and the dragons refused to leave. As the conflict ex escalated, Sarlamir used his dragon lance to slay the dragon's leader, Gold Dragon, Erevarex. As soon as his blood touched the dragon lance, the weapon rusted away in Knight Sarlamir's hand. The dragons attacked, slaying, uh, slaying Sarlamir, crashing the flying city. Only a few of us escaped. And we brought, excuse me, both his body and the cursed dragon lance back to Kalaman. We hid the cursed item down here to keep it out of the hands of those who would use it to kill the, uh, the dragons of Paladine. But when we returned, I, I did not tell the truth. I did not want to bring shame upon our order. Though I see now that was a mistake. I lost my honor in that moment. And now, I'm stuck here. I would ask you to do me a favor, if you will. I will. Go on. Can I let go of my invisibility while they're talking? I forgot about that. Yeah, I would say if you're going to play your instrument, you're probably already dropping it anyways. <clears throat> it says, the next chamber where Sarlamir is resting. Though I don't know if he's actually resting these days. Maybe you can fix my mistake. Dragonlance is laid there with him. Maybe if you use it, you may be able to redeem my order, maybe even my soul, and redeem this whole city with the God's favor. Your, your ask of us is a noble one, and I myself am full-heartedly in agreement that this is a quest that we must take on. Thank you. Be careful, though. I have heard things moving in there. Normally, Before, they don't. 
before you go, is there anything about that chamber that that we should know? Not the recent things, obviously, moving in there, but any traps that you guys have set around the Dragonlance that we should worry about? Or worries of if we touch the Dragonlance, it doing something to us? I do not know. Is anybody else there? I'm going to tell her that um, I want to do everything I can and thank her for telling us her story and uh, probably name drop mom and say that um, with her permission I can have her make sure the history books reflect the real truth did you say this um you can see ethereal tears well up in her eyes and she kind of closes them and looks down um pretty much in a bow thank you for padrag I'm glad somebody can fix my mistakes. And if we do find our fallen comrade, we'll make sure to bring him back here. If he is indeed fallen. These these great metal dragons you speak of, the, before you go, do you know of any weaknesses? Because we have witnessed one, and I'm sure we will be coming up against more. So she was talking about metallic dragons, not metal dragons. Well, yeah, but would that not be the same the kind same of dragon kind of that dragon. we saw no. at Ogla? No, no. So you would so, know the difference. There, there's chromatic dragons, and then there's metallic dragons. Chromatics are whites, greens, blues, blacks, reds. Um, basically, your your basic crayon set. Uh, those are evil dragons. What she is talking about is metallic dragons. Gold, silver, bronze, copper, um, steel, brass. brass. These ones, uh, their, their scales are harder for the most part. Um, they're used, some of them are bigger and stronger, um, but they, the, the main thing you need to worry about, or rather not worry about, is metallic dragons are good. Uh, usually. Some of them are a little more neutral. Um, however, a lot of them are lawful. Um, what she described is their problem was that uh, that this uh, high priest had basically taken a chunk of the earth and lifted it into the sky with magic. Which is, you know, it, it disturbed the dragons. Which is why there was an issue in the first place. Okay, I retract my question due to lack of player knowledge and character knowledge. Yeah, Dragonlands does dragons different. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the good thing still stands, but their their alignments are a little shiftier than, like, say, Faerun more. But, um, that being said, um, as she thanks Padrag, she vanishes. As she does, one more time, echoing through the chamber, you hear, thank you. So, so, this knowledge, what y'all want to do? I'm going to look at our uh, doorbusters. Well, 
looks like we got to go in and figure this out. Are you ready, just in case there's something on the other side of this door, everyone? Um, what does the door look to be made of? Same as the others, just a double door instead of a single door. All stone. And can we check for traps before we open it? Sure, go ahead and check. Um, maybe we could uh, work together. I will... I will check for, uh, you know, traps of a normal nature, and one of you can check for ones of an arcane nature. I'll assess for any arcane sigils or traps. All right, so. And I'll help him in that. All right, Bron, arcana at advantage. Bjorn, investigation. Oof. You guys don't find new traps. Ron readies his shield and uh, mace and gets ready to charge through the door. Was there something I was supposed to take from this room to the next room? Or. No. She didn't, like, give me something? No. Okay. Then I have my weapon and shield out. I'm casting uh, guidance on myself. In preparation. Sure. You guys pop the door open. Step in. Apparently ready for a fight. As you look around, violet flames outline the tombs set in the walls of this spacious crypt. A heavy stone brazier sits empty near the room's center. The sarcophagus to the north lies in pieces at the mouth of a crumbling tunnel. And as you guys kind of look, you can't see all the way through, but given your spatial awareness, you're pretty sure that on the other side of that tunnel is the room that collapsed. Um, <clears throat> a wall to the southeast is similarly broken, in, uh, leaving a pathway in the wall. At the far end of the tomb, a flaming dais holds a sarcophagus sculpted with the image of a knight a life-size sculpture of a dead dragon impaled with a spear curls around the sarcophagus you all can give me a perception <coughs> roll before i ask a question yes please okay Violet flames waver, forming ominous images once more. The terrifying knight from the last vision steps through the wall. He approaches the brazier, the room center, above which royals, flaming orb. The knight holds up a scepter, sculpted with screaming faces. Once touched to the ball of flame, the scepter ignites, and the orb vanishes. The knight admires the flaming scepter, then points it at the ornate tomb. The statue at the end of this room. Both burst into flames that spread throughout the crypt. The figure then moves to the south wall, vanishes. That is in the vision. However, with your perceptions. Gondar. Yep. You realize that there is something moving. You hear sounds within this tomb. Guys, there's something in this tomb. Um, the Does the dragon look like the dragon from the story? Or is it like just a skeleton? Um, 
I mean, she didn't tell you what kind of dragon it was. She said it was dragon. Oh no, she said silver dragon, didn't she? I thought it was gold. No. Uh, give me a second. I'll check, but I'm pretty sure it was. Do, do, do. Does a dragon fall under aberration celestial? No, it falls under dragon. Because I know the it said the skin was metallic, and when the blood got on the lance, the lance rusted. Because that's you're not supposed to do that. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, sorry. It was the gold dragon Caravarex. Caravarex. But the the dragon in this room is it like a skeleton or a sculpture or? It is a statue. Okay. And the, the sounds are definitely coming from the box, not the dragon? Yes. Well, Gondar's the one who heard them. Oh. Uh, he did, however, tell you. So, I mean, uh, you can pause for a moment and see if you can hear it. Um, it. It does. It seems like it's coming from the tomb. I uh, got Does it look like it's like welded shut or a normal kind of lid situation? It seems to be a lid. Give me an investigation. It's been open yes, recently. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell the guys um, it's been open recently. I would have been too late. Can I put my ear to it? Yes. You hear whispers and something shifting side and every once in a while those whispers turn into a yes yes of course of course I, i'll do i'll do light bidding i i promise i promise i swear so discernible language is common or yes okay i want to cast a spell what do you want to do Okay. All right. Sure. I had one question about my red red conundrum. So it summons the elemental, but it you, you just gave me the the spell summon elemental to mimic it, but that spell says it takes one minute to cast because I'm using the red conundrum. Would that take one minute to uh to activate? Because I believe we said no, it would not. Okay, so then I can use it once combat started. Yes. Uh, did I do Divine Sense two or three times? Um, if Twice. you did it again right now in this room, three. Okay. Uh, hold up. Did we all hear the voices or just one person? I'd say it's not exactly quiet anymore. It's getting louder. Um, you also notice as you get close, Padraig, um, that this tomb seems to bear the words Xanus Sarlamir, Knight of the Crown. Sure, you cast Shield of Faith. However, however, as you guys do as this, you, guys... 
Give me a dexterity save. A drag. Um, did the divine sense get anything? Uh, it did not. Because this thing is in total cover. Okay. No, I just didn't know if it had been like a consecrated or desecrated uh, tomb. Because this tomb is a little fancier than the other ones. But I don't know. Uh, Dex? Yep. How does luck work? Uh, you gotta say you're gonna use a gift of luck charge before you roll. And then I just get advantage? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna use gift of luck on dexterity because I'm fat. Ouch. See how fat I am? The lid of this tomb shatters, sending shards out from it. Greg, you were the only one close enough to um, get it, and wow. They managed to, some of these shards managed to find the uh, weak points in your armor, and uh, some of these shards pierce you. Um, rather nastily, actually. In fact, you do find that there's, uh, feels like there's a couple shards still embedded in you. you. Take 11 points of damage as the tomb shatters and something stands up from within it. When I see him get struck, can I quickly cast Healing Word mm -hmm. on him? Nope. It's not a reaction, and we are starting combat. Please click on your tokens and roll your initiative. He stands up. You hear? Yes, Lord Soth. I will get them for you. I will bring them to their knees. Uh, you see that um, though he's still wearing his armor, um, it seems like it is still in pretty decent shape, though dusty. Um, shining from his eyes and mouth is a more of a uh, more of a deep purple uh, light and as it shifts its eyes back and forth the direction of the light shining out changes he has no eyeballs but you feel like this is how he is able to see Gondar it is your turn what would you like to do uh, well, I guess uh, talking is out of the question, so I'm heading up to here, there exactly, that's the limit of my movement. Uh, uh, as a bonus action, I cast Hexblade Scares on uh, that creature, right. say We'll get rid of you again and send you back to where you came from. And uh, I cast Blast on him. Okay, send it. Uh, I guess it doesn't hit it does not you managed to take a chunk out of the stone statue behind him okay that goes the second one that's a hit
that's uh, plus three because of the hex blade scares. Okay. And Tevin. Bjorn. Yes. So I'm going to move up a bit. Uh, now that I'm there, I'm going to cash, cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter on And I'm going to yell out... Why do grizzlies never look sad? Because whenever there's a problem, they just grin and bear it. Uh, he begins to laugh. Uh, first it's just a chuckle. <laughs> and it gets louder and louder until he kind of, uh, falls back into his, uh, his, uh, coffin. Laughing hysterically. A uh, bonus action, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Padraig. And then I'm going to just move over and end my turn. Hi, Padraig, you're up. The thing I move behind, is that something I can hide behind? It's a brazier. I mean, it's uh, it's like three feet tall. So, I mean, to do that, you would have to, like, go down to your knees to get behind it. So it would, uh... Half cover? I mean, if you're standing, it'll be half cover. If you want more than that, though, it's going to take you uh, half your movement to stand back up next turn. Alright, well, well, half... So he's in Night of Slumnia armor? He is. But he's undead. And his weapon is... Uh, he has a enervating blade. So he's not wielding the lance from the story? He's not. Okay. Uh, is it a one-hand or two-handed sword? It is... Uh, I'm gonna say, I guess it's a two-hand. Okay. Um and did he like fall prone laughing or what yes. what's his current yes. Oh, okay. And he's inside the coffin thingy? Yes. Um Can can I climb up here and fucking stab him while he's laughing prone? Yes. Uh would I have advantage? Yes. Okay. Bards are so weird. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm not going to yell anything this time. I clicked the wrong thing. Yes. Yeah, you you bring your uh, your sword down and you do manage to uh, connect. And then really. And then I'll do it again. Okay. Right. Is he still laughing? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. He's he, he gets. Yeah, at advantage. <laughs> he is not laughing. 
Ow, you bastard. How dare you oppose Lord Soth? Uh, this time he bats it away with uh, the backside of his sword. Um, I'm I'm a chill. I'll tell him though. Um, like, like Soth is lame, and you shouldn't kill the pretty dragons. Sure. Braun. Braun charges forward. Um, and as he runs, he's going to yell, Soth will burn. And as he gets to about here, he's going to cast a sacred flame on this guy. Oh, it's dexterity, not wisdom. Uh, which is... Okay, no. Uh, unfortunately, as as the flames begin to engulf him, he just kind of stomps, and they just dissipate. Uh, Bronze gonna um kind of just stock up and get ready for a fight. Get a little bit closer, and that'll be Bronze's turn. He laughs at you, Braun. But he turns on you, Drag. What's your AC, sir? 26. Fuck off. You're kidding me, right? Nope. Christ. Uh, I, uh, I did shield of faith before combat initiative rolled. You parry the first one, the second one hits your shield, the third one uh, gets past your defenses, but just kind of glances off your armor. Gondar. Okay, I get closer. Strike with my glaive. Sure. You miss. I attack again. You hit. So your first one, uh, you, you go in at him. Um, he just kind of like steps to the side, uh, but then you turn the blade and come back uh, to his side. And man, you get underneath, uh, like it, into the back um, of his plate, where you find a spot in the back of the knee, and kind of sinks in a little bit. Okay. All right. Uh, is that with your? Mm -hmm. uh, does your hex blades curse do more? Yeah, it's plus three. Yeah, it's a plus three for that. And okay. uh, that's magical damage. Yep. And uh, as my bonus action, I hit him with the butt end of my glaive. Yeah, you, uh, after hooking his knee, you kind of, uh, you pull back and do a spin and bring the butt end uh, towards his head. Uh, you do manage to hit him in the jaw. Check's Blade's uh, uh, curse. Uh, it's only once per turn does the extra damage, or is it every time? No, every time I hit this guy. Uh, give me a moment. So any attack is also crit on a 19. Okay. 
And that's all. Bjorn. Can I see him? Yes. So I'm going to cast Toll of the Dead then? Toll of the Dead? Sure. Wisdom saving throw? He is unaffected, it seems. Huh. Am I able in to fact, use my... Wait. In fact... Instead, you see some of his wounds heal up. So my ill-fated word would not have made a difference? No, he didn't even fucking roll, dude. Oh no, I think I think it uh, heals from necrotic damage. I may have made a mistake. And that's all I'm going to do this turn. Drag. Uh, so he's no longer prone. He is not. He is standing. Oh, I didn't roll with advantage earlier, did I? To hit. Oh well. Yeah, your rolls were advantage. Oh, okay, cool. Why? What do you have that gives you advantage? No, before he was prone. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, he, yeah, so no, no he rolled now he's he not. Rolled it. So, uh, bonus action, Vow of Enmity for my channel Divinity. Uh, bonus action, you utter a Vow of Enmity against a creature. You can see within 10 feet of you using your channel Divinity. Advantage on attack rolls. Okay, so, uh, Gondar, don't forget to mark down. You've uh, used two out of ten rounds for your thing, and this will be your first uh, of ten for your Vow of Emony, Pedrake. Um, is there a way to note that in my seat? Or uh, some... No, you got to just do it on, like, paper or something. Okay. okay. Every time every time your, your turn ends, that's one round. Okay. That is a hit. Just barely. Okay. And? Yeah, you, uh, as he, uh, you manage to, um, avoid all his hits, you, you get one in of your own, um, cutting into, uh, the little flesh that's left on his ribs. Yeah. yeah. Once more with feeling. Uh, you then come in with an overhead chop, um, slamming it into his collarbone. Or it, through the armor into the area where the collarbone is. Nice. Um, I, that's it. You want to give me the damage or? Oh. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Braun. The Braun will continue his charge in, and he's going to jump up on this um, tomb. Because this guy's standing on the tomb, or he's in a tomb? Yeah, he's, he's inside. Like, there's, uh, like, the, the, the lid was shattered. That's how the drag took the initial damage. I'm gonna get right in there with them. I'm jumping into the and kind of getting a low angle. Maybe I jump in and go right to my knees, um, and I'm gonna put my hands together and cast a burning flame or burning hands uh, right in his crotch. Okay. Uh, give me a roll. And Pedreg, did you add that extra five healing you got from Bjorn? Or the eight, I should say. Oh, it was eight? Yeah, it was eight. 
Well, it was five. The first one was eight, but you said I couldn't cast it when the first time I clicked it, so it's up to you whether you're using my first roll or second. Oh, I thought your first roll was the five, no? The first roll was the eight. The one that was in combat was a five. Okay, then yeah, it's five. Okay, yeah, I updated my health with the five. All right, um... He kind of, uh, as you cast this, uh, you do catch him, but not as strongly as you were hoping to. And he leaps out and rolls and stands back into this position. But you did hit him a little bit. Um, do I get an attack of opportunity as he comes closer? He was already within your range. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I will just use any movement that it would have to stand back up because I kind of landed on my knees and posture towards the, uh, the skeleton and that'll be the turn. Okay. He is going to make some slashes. A drag, Gondar, Brawn in this order. 26, Padrag. No faded word. Okay. That becomes a miss. Uh, an 18, uh, Gondar? No. I have the 20 at the moment because of the blood elbow. And Bronn will warding flare uh, to impose disadvantage. On, on yours, I take it? Yeah, just on my own, um, as as he swings at me, I do a flash of light. Can you post that for me? Oh, never mind, you already did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> you warding flare. And as the brightness in front of you just starts to uh, dissipate, dissipate, sorry, you see his sword slash in, catching you off guard, taking a nice healthy chunk off your arm. 27 necrotic damage. Ooh and you cannot regain hit points till the start of his next turn. Okay. He chuckles. And he starts to move to a more advantageous position. Nope. Go for it. I know what you're going to do, Padrag. Try it. See what, see what you got. That's a hit. As he uh, tries to uh, step back, uh, you manage to get a sword swing off, slashing across his back. Gondar. I attack. Yep. Uh, I guess unfortunately, you miss. You miss. Yeah. <laughs> you misjudge his traje trajectory as he moves. And then you try to correct it, and this time uh, he parries it with his rather large sword. Okay, I attack again with my bat hand, which usually hits. 
You just had to say that, time. didn't you? You had to say that. Yeah, I had to say that. You're right. And I step backwards. Okay. Uh, I don't know if, if I, I'm not. Um... He swings and misses. Okay. Is that it for you? Yeah, sorry. Forgot to mention that. Bjorn, you're up. Yep, so I'm going to move there and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery on him. I'm going to yell out, What do you call a burial ground? Or, fuck, I fucked it up. Yeah. What yeah. do you call a cemetery for bears? A burial ground and i'm gonna put you in it jesus christ that hurt me <laughs> psychic damage i'm thinking of having this disadvantage uh, myself here <laughs> he apparently uh has no faculty for these kind of jokes as he seems unaffected Fuck. And I can't heal him, even with a spell. Technically, you don't know that. I should not have said that out loud. Uh, I'm going to just, uh, I don't know, do nothing. I'm going to just kind of hide behind this pillar. Sorry, guys. I tried my best. That is a brazier. Yeah, I know, but I'm hiding behind it. It's not a pillar. A drag. Steady. That's a hit. Okay. Now one more time. Yep. The second hit. As his back is turned, uh, facing Gondar, as he had swung at him. Uh, and missed. You take the opportunity to get two strikes in across his back. Uh, you do manage to pierce his armor both times. Um, for the sake of one of my spells, uh, Brawn, are you at less than 50% health? I'm looking okay after that slice. It hit me it, it, I'm looking okay. okay. The It's very specific language. So you're better than 50%? Yep. So so, so how, was... how I do that um, is I will tell the players, like, uh, if if you're below 50%, you look bloody. Uh, that's that's the best way to do that is, you know, if you're above 50%, um, I'm fucking, you know, I got a couple scratches and bruises, nothing major. But if you're underneath 50%, then you can use words like, you know, bloody. Or, you know, you, you've got, like, you know, one more hit and you're going to fucking die is, you know, I'm fucking bleeding from everywhere. Something similar to that. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to use this yet, but that was a fucking big hit earlier. So I might actually get to use this today. Yeah, it was a big hit, but Bronze not too bloodied. He's, he took the hit, but he's good. Okay, yeah, I'm saving my reaction. How do you have so much health? Aid. Oh, so 58 plus aid was your your ba your baseline? Yeah. Okay. I was I was confused there for a moment. Yeah, I subtracted aid and then I subtracted from my health, so I have yeah, what I got there. 
And mine's permanently lowered because of that ring that gives me an extra life. Is it? I think you just cash in some of your hit points. It doesn't lower your maximum. It just you put no, some of your hit points. Really? Yeah. It. I six of my hit points are in that ring, and if I get knocked down to zero, I can use my reaction as I fall to put them back into me and come back up. What's the ring called? Ring of Life? Uh, Hoarded Life. Found, life. found it. Uh, Ring the ring, you can use an action to spend more and more hit dice up to your maximum hit dice. For each dice spent in this way, you roll the die and add the constitution modifier to it. Your maximum hit your hit point maximum is reduced by the total. Yeah, and the ring stores it up to 30 points. Uh, reduction can't be removed with great restoration or similar magic lasts, uh, lasts as long as hit points remain stored in the ring. Wow. Maybe God it's not damn, you need, you need aid. Get this man some aids! I got AC. I'm okay. I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah, you definitely fucking got AC. Uh, but yeah, uh, bonus action or movement? Um... Oh, bonus action. Shit. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to... Can I try to shove him... How, how big are those stairs? I mean, it's like regular size stairs and there's only two of them. Okay, I was just trying to picture like the what it would look like if I moved the camera down. Okay, I'm just going to uh, hit him with the spiky ends of the shield bash. Sure. Um, so is this in a, this That's is a, right. So I don't have advantage. Nope. I'm going to use one of my Lux. Okay. So I have one left. Yep, knocks him back five feet, and he is prone. Uh, was it uh, E4 plus two? If you knock someone into someone's threatened square, do they get an opportunity attack? No, uh, it has to be uh, of their own volition. Okay. Because I know, I know the other way around, it doesn't work. Like, if I knock somebody out, somebody doesn't get an opportunity attack. Exactly. Sure. No. Um, like, like, if um, Gondar was to have a uh, repelling blast, and he was to hit, and he knocked somebody out of range, it wouldn't work. For, for an attack of opportunity. Okay. Does that also work with Grasping Arrow? Uh, Grasping Arrow? Uh, if the person, like, chooses to make movement while Grasping Arrow is on them, they take damage. It's a ranger thing. A uh, creature hit by the arrow takes an extra 2d6, speed is reduced by 10 feet. Takes... 2d6 slashing the first time it moved what, or without teleporting. Okay. Um, then yeah. Uh, no, I, I would have to say the same kind of thing. It's it's based on choice of movement. Like, it, okay. if it was like a fear or something, something like, you know, uh, it was a fear spell and then, you know, they had to use a turn to move, then yes, I would allow both uh, attacks of opportunity as well as that to work. But oh. but because it's like, you know, you're knocking them back, no, unfortunately. Thank you for explaining that. No problem. Uh, I guess that's it for you, yeah? Uh, yeah, I gotta save my reaction. Alright. Braun. Uh, Braun will hop out of the sarcophagus and run towards 
the skeleton who's prone. The skeleton's prone on the ground. He is. I'm gonna take my mace and I'm gonna swing on a called shot for his skull. A called shot? Yeah. Are you sure about this? Yeah. All right. Send I want to. I, I want to smash him right between the fucking eyes. All right. The AC. <laughs> he he manages to roll to the side, and you slam your uh your mace into the ground. Bronze is getting like visibly frustrated as he's like wants to kill the skeleton so badly and he looks up at it um and that's bronze turn he stands up as you go to pull back for another swing however unfortunately for you what tracy again 20. I will try to warding flare him again. I, I, I'm not knowing if the warding flare was in completely ineffective or if it just didn't work. I will try to warding flare again. You take 17 necrotic damage. Wait a minute. Can I use cutting word? Hey, so both of you are burning your reaction. Okay, sure. 2d8 minus. Or sorry, 1d8. It's 1d8 minus. Yeah, doesn't matter. He had just hit, anyways. So, even a minus one would make a miss. He manages to miss both, and with that happening, he steps over here and he's gonna make his last attack against Gondar. Oh, so did he hit? Me? He did not. Okay. Uh, I guess he was uh, again within my reach because uh, yeah, he was. Him. Yeah. yeah. Um, he stands up and he takes a swing at you. Um, he manages to get inside your glaive's area and he slices from the back of your wrist up to your elbow. And you take 23 necrotic damage, sir. I am resistant to necrotic at the moment. Then yeah. you take uh, the uh, the lesser share of 23. So, okay. 11? 11, okay. And I think I don't have the um, disadvantage with the uh, hit points. With the not being able to regain. Um, I think it just said it doesn't lower your maximum. Hold on a sec. Where is your Here's Hexblade's Curse? Uh, bonus damage rolls. Uh, da -da -da, target roll. 19 to 20. Oh no, your spell. That's what that's right. Okay, your spell was Shadow Adaptation. You are immune to shadow corruption and have resistance to necrotic damage. In addition, you have advantage on saving throws against effects that reduce your strength score or hit point maximum. Um, it does not reduce your hit point maximum. You just can't regain hit points. Okay. Um, but that is his turn. Gondar, it is now your turn. Okay, big fellow. <sighs> Time to return the favor. Is it though? Uh, I feel like it might not be. <laughs> Man. What's happening? <laughs> the sadness in your voice. No. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm taking a couple of steps steps back. Oh, hold on a second, hold on a second. Why is why do you only have a plus four? Well, it's, uh, I have a plus five, I think. No, something's wrong. Give me a second. 
Anyway, anyway, even uh, if I did have a plus one more. Your your glaive is your fucking hex weapon, yeah? So, yeah, that's right. It's you it, it's it's using your strength again, I don't know why. Should it be charisma modifier? It should be, yeah. yes. Alright, so plus proficiency plus the plus one? Yeah, so it should be eight. This is like the the butt end is using the proper um, additives, but the others are not. Okay, let me see. So your both of those attacks, uh, the first two glaive attacks hit. Let me see. Where else did you use your glaive? Yes, that one would have been a hit. So roll me a three damages. That's weird, man, because up there, it was rolling with uh, Charisma. I'm looking at it now. Somehow it changed to Strength. Glitch in the Matrix. Well, and, like, if you look at his damage, why is it 1 plus 4 plus 1? It's not, like, rolling 1d whatever. It's just rolling 1 plus 4 plus 1. What happened? Did you make any changes to your sheet? No. Haven't touched it. I mean, it was working fine at the start of battle. Yeah, the one even says rolling three hex blades curse equals three. You should probably reload. I just added a global, a global damage modifier with hex blades curse. I'll turn it off in case it uh, fucks things up. What is fucking happening right now? Oh, you have two different fucking glaives for some reason in your thing. Maybe that's got something to do with it? Hold on a sec. What should you glaive? Oh, no? Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, what should your glaive be? Give me a second. Be a D10. Alright, give me... Try rolling that again. Uh, not the attacks, just the damage. Give me three of them. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, 14 and 9 is 23, plus your Hexblade's Curse, which is another 9, makes it 31 damage. Alright, okay. anything else? I felt fixed by, by now. <laughs> Anyway, I'm uh, moving for backwards again. Okay. And what is your AC again? Trendy. Uh, you managed to kind of do a, a spin and use the butt end of your, your glaive to plant into the floor and you kind of do like a, a leap. And he goes to swing, and you kind of go over the blade um, and land safely away. Is that it? Yeah. Bjorn. Yeah, so I'm going to move to there. I have a clear line of sight of him from there. Yeah. I'm going to use a Gift of Luck and cast Eldritch Blast. Sure. Uh, do I roll this? Yep. Not 20. Wow, nice. Okay, so... 
Um, Do I get that seven plus six damage, and then doubled for the? No, no, critical? that that is what the crit is. That's why there's a plus there. If you mouse over, you only get two d eight, right? So you got your two d eight, and then your the six was the two d eight for the crit. All right, negative thirteen. Uh, on save or be poisoned. Uh, yeah, he's not rolling that. Um, as he, uh, misses his swing on Gondar, um, all of a sudden he gets blasted with, uh, this, uh, this beam of cold. Sorry, he doesn't actually get blasted with a beam, but, uh, he, he suddenly, uh, gets very cold. Yeah, no. That's all that happens from. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna use some of my movement to move towards Gondar, and then... sure. Bonus action at all? Uh. Is no, no, I don't have really that much left. Okay, the drag. Pew pew. Flash, flash. Let's see it. As you rush in, um, you manage to try and uh, swing at him, but unfortunately, does not land. That one does, though. Turns out your first one was just a feint uh, to get his sword uh, a little bit out of the way, so you kind of feint in and uh, he misjudges it and he leaves himself open. You swing in with your sword. Connecting. He's starting to look pretty weak. Um, can't kick a man while he's down if he's not prone, so... Well, this is a straight roll. Bro, you could have rolled a two and you would have succeeded. You got a nat one. Out. He got a nat one and a fucking nat 20. But the nat, he doesn't have advantage. The nat 20 doesn't matter. <laughs> Just gets the nat one. His legs crumble. He gets sent backwards. Give me your damage for it. Get those 20s out of the system. Okay. Um, he lands on his back. Any more movement? Um. I'll go there. Braun. He is prone. Ron's gonna try the exact same thing because he's he just wants the skeleton dead so bad. Takes mercy out after seeing it fly him fly across. He's gonna use his gift of luck charge, and he's on the ground, and he is gonna make a called shot again for the skull. All right. A shame as you go to swing down with your maze he, he raises his sword and he kind of puts the tip on the the ground by your feet and he holds the the hilt um 
a little bit above his face, and your mace manages to slam into uh, his sword instead. Ron will um, kind of use his whole bonus action just to push the mace into the sword as much as he can before we're kind of bouncing backwards again, posturing up, because that's all he can do. And he's going to hold off his bonus action for later in case he needs it and end turn. All right. He stands back up. And he's going to make some attacks. Brawn, and then Pedrag, and then Brawn. Um, one question. Um, from the last warding flares, was there any sort of reaction from the skeleton when that happened, or...? Didn't seem to affect him at all. Yeah, okay, he's not... Brawn's not going to warding flare this time. Yeah. Well, the first one, you do manage to uh, block the drag. Uh, the next one, you manage to bounce off your shield, but then he comes back swinging low this time at you. Um, Ron. Holy shit. Uh, hey, Bron? Yep. The crit. 29 Excellent. necrotic damage. Nice. Bronze still good, but he's bleeding bad. He uh he sinks his big sword into uh the the calf and you feel it hit the bone. Um it even takes a nice little chunk out of the bone as he withdraws the drag. You get sprayed with some uh some blood coming back from his sword. He says Lord Soth will bring me back. I will do what I was sent to do. I will bring those filthy dragons to their knees. Gondar. Okay. I rush in again. I take a, take a couple of swings at him. Yep, it was that about... is a crit. Yeah, that is a crit. So, roll me your damage once. And then you get to roll me a... Another d10. That's plus three. Yep, so 19. You, you charge in and you slam this glaive into his back and it sinks about halfway up the blade. Uh, starts to protrude through the chest and you hear him. Ah! Go ahead and ah. take your next swing. Not there yet. Coming. Ah. However, he expects it this time and as you withdraw and go to stab again, he parries uh, your your glaive uh, does kind of a whole circle with it and sends it sends you kind of spinning around but as you spin around you come back across with the butt and you hit him square in the chest that's 11 and I take a couple of steps back again and then Bjorn, he's looking very weak. He's uh, he's still trying to hold his sword up. He's like, you will not defeat me. I will that... lay you low. In that case, I'm going to move into line of sight. And I'll use a gift of luck to cast the Eldritch Blast. Yep, send it. Um, he's still standing, although he looks very cold. He, you see kind of some frost forming on his, uh, on his armor. Uh, 
the strange blood-like ichor that is dripping out um, is starting to solidify on his his armor. No! You will not defeat me! Bonus action. He's weak, guys. Finish him off. No, I got nothing for bonus action. But drag. Send this one out with a bang. Yup. It's a hit. You strike, um, and you feel your blade sink into his metal armor, and you feel it cracking ribs as your blade slides through. He is still up, but just barely. He's barely holding his sword. No, this is not how it ends. Not again! I don't understand how cosmology works, so I'm going to say uh, back to the abyss with you. <laughs> and you hit. Nice. I'm glad the eights are on damage not to hit. <laughs> Did you want to add anything else to make this a little extra flair? Um, if my sword goes in, I'll uh, add insult to injury and push him off with the shield. We weren't trying to save this one for questioning, so I'm not worried about doing a couple extra points at the end. All right, I was going to give you a chance to smite, make it real fucking cool, but I got you. You, uh... You sink your sword in. Oh, wait, I forgot. He's actually going to make a roll first. You sink your sword in. And you're pretty sure you feel his spine. Saving throw. Five plus damage taken. Oof. Holy shit. He stays aloft. You, you feel the spine on your sword, and he kind of cries out, Ah! No! He is still alive. Not by much. Not by much. The final luck? Athletics. All right. You slam him with your shield. It is not a great success, but it is a success. You want to describe this? Uh, <laughs> damn minimum damage. Um, I'll just uh, swords like, you know, spine deep into this dude, and I'm just gonna use the spikes of the shield and knock him off and that's when I'm going to say vengeance because I want to get my sword back out of this uh, uh, dude and I've already given him shit for killing the pretty dragons yeah you you uh, you raise your shield and you slam it into him the large spike manages to sink directly into his mouth and you hear the crack as the jaw splits apart and the bottom jaw kind of falls to the ground and he goes careening five feet away and crumples into a pile. You, you guys can see the, the purplish light that was shining in his eyes and out of his mouth. Slowly fade to nothing. And I guess I'd glance around the room for the lance. Well done, mate. The rest of the head is still intact. I mean, yeah. Smashing it. That was rough. 
Okay. Let's smash the undead creature's head. Yep. Is there anything else in this uh, uh, tomb? Uh, Padrag said he was going to look for the, the lance. So first, Padrag, give me an invest investigation. Um, but drag, you remember the, uh, the vision that you saw, and it looked like Lord Soth had taken out the, the lance. However, you only remember him taking the lance handle out of here. It seems the head of it was missing. Um, I will move to the middle of the room and do detect magic. The slot I didn't use on this month. Sure. Uh, after Braun smashes him, he is going to do some just searching of the body to see if there's anything else else on it. On it. Yeah, as I do it, I want to say to the guys, um, uh, this is the last time I can find magical stuff today. And you said you're using detect magic, yeah? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. There it is. So yeah, uh, this is the last time I can find magical stuff today. Um, uh, uh, let's get what we can and and move on with the, the feet moving kind of fast. So Gondar, as he moves to the center of the room, you move over to the, the uh, sarcophagus. As you look down in there, you notice uh, a distinctive head of a rusty spear. Okay. Uh, I take it. As he lifts I this out, uh, Padrag, your detect magic goes off. And at first you think it's just Gondar, but as he turns, you see he's got the rusted head of a spear in his hand. It is shimmering with evocation magic. Uh, when I see it, I'll say that must be from the Dragonlance. Oh, and where's the rest of it? Uh, Soth took it in one of the visions. So he's got the hilt. In fact, during the vision, you saw him walk out this makeshift tunnel. I feel like we're missing something, but... Why would he Why would he that? Um, if I'm trying to think, so this one rusted because it was used against the wrong kind of dragon. Uh, it was a warrior of good who used it against a dragon of good, which is why it probably rusted immediately. So he might be, but we don't have, we don't have good dragons. I don't think in this world right now. He could have just wanted the hilt for, like, nostalgia or whatever. But he could also be turning it into another weapon that would be, you know, because he switched sides. He went from being a good knight to a bad knight. So maybe he's going to make the tip work for evil. Phrasing. Evil! Just the tip. Okay, Can well, I, I present the uh, spear head to Patrick and uh, give it to him. Yeah, I think that uh, you should take that. It's more connected to you, your beliefs and uh, order. 
third time in what, what are we it's been a few hours but it's been like less than an hour in game like i wish bedver was here hmm. right in that i'd love to have been able to see him use this against that dragon that attacked our boat can i be investigating this dragon thoroughly sure what do you look for anything fancy is there like any gems or inlaid anything on it behind it around it? is it holding something nope it is just a regular statue my guy the other tombs yeah did anything else go off from detect magic other than us did not uh his corpse that sword he had no in fact uh looking at it it seems rusted yeah i've probably been in there for a while and this place doesn't have humidity control um i i'm just gonna say um i believe the way out is this way and i really don't think we should open any of these tombs why not why not open them? Yeah. Put yourself in their coffin. Think of the families. All right. They're already desecrated here. Perhaps you can find something of use. I opened myself up to magic and I don't I don't find anything I guess you wouldn't since and I, I'd rather not fight any more Z words Andar are you heeding the advice or are you opening the sarcophagus oh yeah, I seem troubled at that. It's obvious uh, I want to open, but uh, I'll listen to my commerce advice. Did the dead guy have anything on him that like looks valuable? Like, is his sword or unique or anything unique about his armor? Just went over that, my dude. No. Oh my bad. Sorry, I was peeing when you went over that. Fair enough. But no, um, as Padreg, you get to the edge of this, uh, you notice that uh, this leads down into a cavern. However, there is no light. But what you do know is you cannot see the bottom, you cannot see uh, across. The only thing you can see is the roof about 20 feet above your head. Drift gold? Let me take a look at that. I go over the edge and stare down. You cannot see the bottom. You cannot see the uh, end of it. You can only see the roof 20 feet above your head. Okay, guys, that goes a long way down, and I think it's a road we'll have to take, but not before uh, resting and recuperating a little. So, we're, we got what we came for, we're not going to search down here anymore, we just want out. Wait, like, what time do I think it is? Uh, what time did you guys come down here at? Anybody remember? Like 1. 1 p.m.? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys took a little while doing stuff, so I'm going to say it's probably getting close to 2 at this point. P.m. Yeah, p.m. Okay, then I'll say, um, I don't think this is outside. 
or it should still be light out, right? Like, it's not even dinner time yet. You guys are aware that you came in through the castle, which is in the center of the city. So you know that this cavern is underneath the city, and you cannot see the bottom. It might be sewers or something gross. Gondor and I can fly. Yeah, and I can see. Uh in there, but uh, I think we shouldn't uh, dare it before resting. So do we take a short rest here and then backtrack, or do we just hightail out of here? I think we'll have to let the others know what uh, what went on. When we get up top, though, there's still other soldiers that have taken the city. We only took the council chamber. The, the, they already had their knights at the gates and patrolling. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to find up there, but if it's bad, it's going to be worse if we take too long to get out of here. Um, let's not have another repeat of Vogler. And let's try to get back to the townspeople as fast as we can. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, we noticed that there wasn't too many more of them, but there definitely was a couple. I think, or at least one at the gate that we passed. And as we mentioned before, with the council dead, we got to go up and do some damage control. All right, let's go. Okay. guys make your way back up um you guys make your way back up and you walk in to find the council chambers is mostly cleaned up however uh you guys have not seen any more of these undead guards. However, there are plenty of Calaman guards. In fact, it looks like most of what was left in the city is in the area. Um, They seem to be interviewing people and uh, subjects and whatnot. However, this is where we are going to end the session because we are going to need to take a few minutes to do something wrong. Level (laughs) 6. Yep. You're actually right for once. Although now that you you said that, maybe I should just be like, nah. Technically, I was never wrong. I, I was just like pandering the other times. Fucking panhandling for levels. That's what you're doing. Panhandling for levels. Will SD for level six. But uh, give me a minute to outro the stream. Um, and then we will work on doing your level ups. So give me a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Um, I'm glad that uh, I think I've seen a few viewers pop in and out. Um, we I might continue streaming this game. I might not. I'm not sure at this point. Um, I might just be, you know, stopping streaming um, for every other Thursday. Uh, but they have now reached level six. They're about halfway through this campaign. So. I hope that we will see you uh, in the next coming days. Let's see, Friday we have, uh, tomorrow I'm going to run some Tarkov, uh, about 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Saturday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Lost Minds and the Mad Mage. Uh, I'm not sure what episode we're on. We are a little bit further than this one. I want to say we're getting close to 30, I think. Mm. Uh, Sunday, we have Adventures in Wildmount at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, they have just left Grim Gallier and uh, hit Rockguard Garrison. So there's uh, some interesting things going to be going on there. And that is going to be at yeah 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then Monday, uh, we had to cancel last week's Baldur's Gate 3 game with uh, you know me and three other guys. But we might 
we're pretty sure we're going to conclude it this this coming Monday. So that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you all there. And remember, everybody, Savage or go home. Pieces.